Okay folks, it's time for us to dive back into Battletech and we're taking care of the final mission on the planet whose name I cannot pronounce. We've been here for a long time, seems like forever, but I want to make sure that all these missions are over and done with before we move on. I feel like that's making an efficient use of our time. So this is coincidentally the same mission that caused us to go bankrupt before, interrupted exercise. So we do know what to expect on this one. It's going to be a battle. And we hopefully won't run into as many LRM-60s or any of them at all because they're very annoying to deal with. But even if we do, we know how to take them out this time. We know what we have to do to, to, to avoid catastrophe. So we're going to go on the contract and whoop some ass. For the negotiation, we're, we're doing all right for funds, but our monthly in upkeep is 295000 So I want to make sure I, I get away with a little bit of money. But at the same time, I do want to get some reputation from this. So I'm going to bring down... I'm going to bring down the salvage a bit so we get plus 3 reputation out of a possible plus 14. The money will leave it at 288 grand, and that will cover our monthly expenses and we'll have some nice leftovers to maybe buy something if the next planet we go to has a shop the planet that we're on it doesn't have a shop so that stinks so let's get out there and deal with interrupted exercise now the first thing you're gonna notice for this mission is that we have a new face on the team riddler he is taking over glitch's job as our multi-targeter in the blackjack so this guy is gonna stay in the back lines on the blackjack or move up to the front and deal with multiple vehicles at close range and some enemies at long range. He's going to be very versatile. And what's going to make Riddler very exciting and make him a bit different from Glitch is the fact that he has the Bulwark ability. So we could really turn him into a sniper because of the AC2 and the large laser. If we get him in a good spot where he can just hit a mech every turn after turn after turn with those powerful long range weapons, then that's what we'll do. But if we see some really juicy opportunities to get in close and hit several targets from different ranges, that's what we'll do. It worked pretty well for us in the previous mission. That's going to be our strategy going in this time. And everybody else is the same. We got Medusa and the Shadow Hawk being a very flexible mech with weapons for every range. The Vindicator Vinny, same as always, a buttload of lasers and an SRM. And of course, Decker in his trusty Panther with sensor lock and evasive movement, as well as a bunch of lasers and some missiles. So with that, let's get out there and interrupt that damn exercise. They pick these empty worlds for conducting exercises in hopes of keeping it a secret. Too bad for them, I suppose. Mm. Savage. Let's do it. Alright, so the mechs that we're going to have to deal with are straight ahead of us. Unfortunately, we don't get an early warning as to where the vehicles are going to be. So that's that's going to be a bit scary. And, and we, we may run into the same problem that we, we had before where the vehicles just came in and ripped our buttholes open and we had no way to really deal with them because of their superior range that's the biggest weakness to my lance right now is that we don't have very strong ranged capability with the blackjack we have ranged support meaning we can peck people down from long range but we're not really instant killing anybody from from a distance so that's going to be something that we we need to try and fill N not necessarily with the blackjack but with our with there's another mech called the jaeger mech that is basically the heavy version of the blackjack and that thing can fit missiles on it in addition to a lot of ballistic weapons like the the autocannon the ac2 and i feel like that will fill the long-ranged role a lot better than the blackjack so we got to keep our eyes open for that now i'm inching forward very slowly but surely because i don't want to engage the enemies while i feel like i'm not ready because I'm not entirely sure how I want to approach this just yet. I think maybe trying to go around on the flanks with Decker might be a good idea. So let's move him out to the side. And then we'll just we'll just end right there. Holding. Taking a protective stance. Commander. And you know, we'll move we'll sprint Decker one more time to get him out in the flanks. And then we'll just inch everybody up a little bit and then end the turn. I'm being very tactical about this one. You've got hostile contacts inbound. 
Oh no, hey, that's interesting. Let's hit him hard. I wasn't expecting the vehicles to appear on the map before we engaged the mechs. So this is something fascinating we could play with right now because we know kind of the general direction where everything is coming from. We do have a better way of dealing with this. We can really push in and just try and deal with all the targets. Because, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. So why don't, why don't we... We'll reserve Decker for now, watch what happens, and then and then respond in kind. Look at that, enemy vehicle driving on. This one's got two small lasers and a medium laser. That is a very... It's actually a surprisingly weak target. It, it seems decently well armored, but overall that's, that's a, a kind of non-issue. So I think what we'll do is just turn around with our blackjack and then fire at it. Not the greatest shot percentages, but not the worst. And, and keeping him in this position, he's got vision over pretty much the entire battlefield where enemies are coming from, so we can do that ranged supporting role that the blackjack is good at. Unfortunately, the laser gonna miss. We did connect with the AC2 for 30 damage. And we've got a second mech coming in. Don't know how many vehicles we're gonna run into. I'm expecting a lot more than just the one because we had four of them the last time we did this mission, but maybe the last time it was two stars instead of one and a half? I'm not entirely sure. Um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reserve one more time. Okay, we got three mechs and one vehicle. If, if it's one vehicle, this is going to be a cakewalk. We'll do one more reserve. I need to see what's out there. Okay, there's the second vehicle. And that's probably the one that's going to give us the most trouble. So here we go. Why don't we Why don't we bring Decker in and, and start putting in work? Because we can jump in and probably eliminate this first one without much stress. And if we angle it correctly, we'll, we'll be pretty safe from any fire that comes from the mechs. And with five points of evasion, even if they sensor lock us, we'll still have a lot remaining. Lifting off. More Boom. Hostiles. Teleports behind you. Nothing personal, kid. Vehicle down. On a different note that isn't about tactics and strategy, I really like Battletech. I know I've said it a couple of times by now, probably more than a couple of times, and it might be a bit annoying for me to keep singing this game praises, but th there's something really nice about wanting to rush home from wherever you are to play a video game. You know, I, th I think that's the feeling that all gamers kind of live for, is that, oh my god, I want to play, I want to play, I want to play. And and that's what it feels like with with Battletech. It's, it's just, it's everything that I want in a strategy game. It's it's everything I want in really a video game in general. It, it's got all the pieces pretty well well put together. And, and that's a nice feeling, you know. Uh, Compared to some other games that I've played recently, you know, there aren't all that many that, that feel like they What's have that on? same kind of pull that, that Battletech has for me. Now, we have an opportunity to move Decker and potentially eliminate another vehicle, but this one is a much soft... It, it's, not, it's not an LRM-60, so it's not that crazy. So what I think I'll do is I'm going to move Decker forward, but I'm going to brace him down. So this is going to make him a bit sturdier. Because I know he's going to get attacked because he's kind of the main target right now. So I want to mitigate as much of the damage that he takes as possible. Now the enemy mechs seem like they're super heavy because they're not moving far at all. Uh, with this guy, I can assume that he's braced down. So I'm not going to try to attack him. I will use the blackjack again and and see if we can get anything. We do have... One target that we can attack, it's a, just a little vehicle over there, so that's that's what we'll go for. It's actually out of range for our large laser, which is a bit annoying. Uh, but maybe I can move to get into range, but then I'd lose out on the, the bulwark, so I don't necessarily want to do that. I could try and jump into the forest, cannot reach. But if I jump, still not in range for the laser, so there's really, really nothing I can do. So I'll just stay here and fire the AC2. And yeah, I mean, if we get a hit... It's a nice chunk out of the armor. Roger that. 
Nice. This man is a sniper. I'm feeling good about Riddler. Oh, no. Wait a minute now. What type of enemy mech was that? I didn't get a whiff of it. <laughs> That's the one. Ah, oh, it's a blackjack. Nice. That's the one downside to playing with the the speed turned up is that sometimes you don't get to see the moves that the enemies are making because they come out so lightning fast. Now, we have some interesting opportunities here. Both of these guys, I think, moved already. And the Blackjack is a pretty ripe target for Medusa and Behemoth. They could move in and just lay into him. He's got the two points of evasion right now, but our shot percentages are still pretty good. So I think that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try and hammer out the Blackjack a bit. Uh, I could move up and brace. You know what? I'll move up. I'll check what the other guy is, because if it's something crazy, then I'll brace. Uh, that's not that crazy. AC5, SRM6, and a medium laser, that's not that strong. If it had an AC20, then I would probably brace. Even an AC10, I would have braced down, but this is not that crazy. So, yeah, let's get some shots in this blackjack. Firing on target. Nice, we hit that leg. Maybe get the knockdown? No, didn't destroy the leg. That would have been a real juicy knockdown. But still, nice, nice work overall. I think what we'll do is if the blackjack survives and if the leg survives, I think in the next turn, maybe I'll try to get a knockdown. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm, I'm thinking too far ahead. Let's just focus on the here and now. Let's move up and blast this fool. Let's get this sucker. Sucker. What are we back in the 70s? Yes. Um, I mean, I could try for a precision shot. If I hit everything on the right torso, I'd get a I'd get a kill on it. Even even the center torso, I could probably take out. I deal 125 damage with all the lasers, and then 32 with the... No, it's not enough. No, it's not. Yeah, I'm not going to precision shot. Just going to fire everything. All right, getting some big hits. But no critical damage. We've got a lot of stuff exposed, though. So that blackjack shouldn't survive for much longer. Now this is the part where we find out if there's an LRM-60 on the field. Doesn't look like it. We they, they, These guys might be short-range missile carriers, though. And that is equally terrifying, which means we arguably shouldn't even move Decker up. Because if, if the two vehicles that moved and didn't shoot are short-range missile carriers, then if we move up, we've condemned Decker to death. <laughs> now, or, or maybe not, because there's a mineral field here. And we've seen this before. It increases the difficulty of our shots and it makes it more difficult for enemies to hit us so we we could be very safe in this position but at the same time i'm going to reserve him for now for and, and just just see what happens first oh now this guy omaiwa mushinderud onto the shadow hawk exposed some structure immediately that hurt way more than i thought it was going to thankfully no critical damage was received Somehow he got his foot way up there, and once again the Shadow Hawk has a bit of his core exposed, which is problematic to say the least about it. So we're gonna have to pull it out of line of sight, and the the fact that we don't have jump jets on the Shadow Hawk is constantly annoying when he starts taking damage to this degree. Because if he had jump jets, I could pull back and then and still fire and feel comfortable comfortable that way but i have to pull back and just keep my my back exposed to the enemy and that stinks but that's all i can really do so we'll just brace down that's very unfortunate that our shadow hawk has been sidelined a second mission in a row let me shut up cuz there's cops outside right as a fire truck, actually, but they're gone. Yeah, this is this is very odd that the Shadowhawk keeps getting sidelined. I feel like this mech is is bad luck right now. Um, now we don't have any targets from our current position with the blackjack, so it's time for us to move to find something better. What we can try, uh, we can get obstructed vision on the enemy blackjack, and I think that's what we're gonna do. I don't know exactly what type of effects obstructed vision has. Like, you can see here that line of sight is slightly broken. I think that just reduces our chance to hit a little bit. But it's better than nothing, right? If we move here, we, we can take a shot, and, and that's what counts. 
and and the blackjack is definitely the target I want to try to eliminate. So let's let's do that. If we get lucky with our AC2 and our large laser, we'll we'll hit this guy in his weak spot and take him out. But even if we don't take him out, we may get rid of some of his weapons. So good things could happen potentially. Really really dude, you going to go for the opposite side than from from the side that we've been hammering on? Okay. Now this one could be intimidating. It is an enforcer. It's got an AC-10, a large laser, and a small laser. Can dish out quite a big punch. And this Wolverine, man, that that was surprising. What he did to us, man. He might have done it. Did he do a death from above? He did. That's what it was. Hmm. That is a that is a surprise. Well, I think because he did a death from above, I feel like I should try and take out his legs. And because our, our Vinny Vindicator has Bulwark because of Behemoth, I could just fire at him and not move. He's got crazy evasion, though. Decker still has his turn. Which means I could jump around just to build some evasion and then sensor lock if I'm in range. Nope. He's out of sensor range. You can see that blue ring. That's my sensor range. So I can't sensor lock the mech. Or maybe, did I have that in the wrong spot? No, I didn't. Yeah, I can't sensor lock the mech. Damn. That kind of stinks. That kind of stinks a little bit. So you know what? Let's get a little aggressive with Decker since he can't go for the sensor lock. Matter of fact, no. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. We're going to bring De Decker back to the main conflict because these vehicles, they don't seem like they can reach us. Or most of them can't reach us. So let's pull back. So yeah, as, as for this guy, this is a moment where a knockdown would actually be kind of crucial for the wolf, for, for us because the Wolverine's already made his move. So if we knock him down this time, it'll push him back in initiative phase and we can take some really juicy called shots on him. So let's, let's, let's go for it. Let's go for it. Precision strike on that leg. Let's get that knockdown, Lock baby. That. Come on, Behemoth. Nice. Most of the lasers hit, and we got the knockdown. So that's going to push him back in initiative phase. Very good. Very, very good. And that bulwark going to be very helpful for us. <sighs> I'm so nervous. It's got 11 health left on that little piece. I definitely think I've made the correct call regarding some of these vehicles because the, the only one of them is able to shoot at us. But at the same time, that LRM guy is is go, he's gunning for the Shadowhawk. So if we don't kill it, the Shadowhawk is going to get hit in that weak spot by one of those missiles. So what we have to do is either break their line of sight, which is not going to happen because we're not going to kill all these targets before breaking line of sight before the before their next volley or kill the LRM carrier. And I'm feeling a little bit ballsy right now with Decker. Five points of evasion. There's no way he'll look. It's go big or go home time, isn't it folks? This is this is Decker's time to shine right now, folks. Look at this. Look at this foolishness. <laughs> if this doesn't work, Decker's dead. Alright, so this one right here is the one that needs to die. But you know what? I'm going to give Decker Vigilance because those S that SRM carrier... Look at... That's so scary. Alright, so we're going to give him Vigilance. And we're going to fire... Everything. Decker, you son of a bitch. You need to get this kill. Get this kill! Missed with 75% of his lasers. <laughs> it doesn't get worse than that, does it? Our Vindicator taking a little bit of a beating. Whew. This, is, this is a tough mission, man. There's no doubt about it. This is a very tough mission. Now... 
We have an opportunity for a called shot. And if we destroy the leg, then we destroy the mech. Because if both of its legs are destroyed, then it can't get up. So I'm going to hold position with the blackjack. It's going to get bulwark. And we're going to go for that leg. If he misses and hits this exposed bit with enough stuff, then he'll get a kill with that too, probably. But man, take out that leg, please. He didn't get it. I was hoping to get it with, with the blackjack because then we would have been able to focus our other mechs on other things, but it's okay. There's, there's, no, there's no safe position for the Shadowhawk anymore because those LRMs, there's really just nothing I could do to keep it completely safe. You know what? We're going bigger going home with the Shadowhawk. We're taking a shot at the Wolverine. Um, this is our left torso, yeah? Yeah, that's our left torso. I'm going to angle the right side of my body with the Shadowhawk as much as possible at the the enemies. So I think I'm going to have to, yeah, I'm going to have to take a step forward, stay in the forest, and just keep the right side of my body as fo focused as possible on the enemies to ensure that they hit the right side and not the left side. So I feel like that's as, as much as I can angle that right side of my body. That's my good side. All right. And then we're going to take another called shot at the leg. Because I really want to focus the rest of my fire from the Vindicator on the Blackjack. There you go. I mean, it's a bit of an overkill. But, you know, sometimes you got to... You got to... Desperate times call for desperate measures. Extreme... Something, something, something. We had to do what we had to do. Um, now, we have a cool opportunity here for another precision strike. And if we go for that, we'll push one of these guys back in initiative phase. The Enforcer is the most intimidating target because of that AC-10. That has some really big potential to punch a hole in us. But the Blackjack is in, be in a better position for these three mechs to lay into him. So I'm going to go for the precision strike on the blackjack and we'll go for the core because if we hit that, we'll blow off an arm and reduce its firepower. Engaging and yeah, that feels good. Nice, 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 nice. That blackjack is pretty much done for. The SRM carrier is going to work on Decker. The sensor lock coming out, reducing his evasion. That one was okay, but he's only got two points left. He still got the brace, though, so that's going to keep him safe when everything comes at his face. Tuck and roll, Decker. Tuck and roll. <laughs> Look how stupid that is. <laughs> oh, man, if that's not proof that the Panther can take a licking and keep on sticking, I don't know what is. Waiting for orders. Well, the LRM carrier ended up, I think, using... Uh, which one was it that sensor locked him? Was it the striker? Yeah, I think it was the striker that sensor locked him. So, okay, so even though we didn't... It, was that... The one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, 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 yeah. So, I think because Decker is here, sort of running distraction mode... It's sort of it's saving us from getting hit with a volley of LRMs on our Shadowhawk. So that does feel pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and take out the SRM carrier. Because that's the biggest threat to Decker. So we'll move up right in his grill, fire everything, and if he doesn't kill it, he's probably going to die. Ooh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't take that kind of risk, should I? But I will. Say I won't take the risk. I'm going to take the risk. Decker, you better save yourself. You better save your damn self, Decker. Please. Please. If, oh, oh, thank goodness. One more for the track. What a mess. What an absolute mess. The AC-10 going to miss Vinny the Vindicator, and that feels amazing because that's a, a huge chunk of damage. But because we're braced down, I don't think even an AC-10 direct hit would have taken off any of our armor, so that feels pretty cool. Now. 
here's where things get cool. How's it going? We're going to switch over to the blackjack. And unfortunately, we've got obstructed line of sight on both targets. And there's really no... I, I, and I don't want to break my bulwark right now. I want to keep that. So I'm going to go for a multi-target. But I'm going to concentrate most of my fire on the blackjack. What is breaking the line of sight? It looks like the shadow hawk is breaking the line of sight. Hmm. That's odd, so maybe I should move it first. Good to go. I wasn't planning on on moving the Shadow Hawk, but You know what? There's there's a certain play that I want to make that I can't make if I move Medusa first. So you know what? I'm going to take the shot with our blackjack Waiting first. And we're going to do a multi-target play. So, the reason I want to do this multi-target play is because I want to reduce the evasion on both of these targets before doing anything. So, we're going to have to cut out the large laser because that's generating too much heat. That's the downside to this setup, is that the large laser does not get used a lot in our multi-targets. But overall, it's fine. So, we're going to send the AC2 at the blackjack. The medium lasers will go to the enforcer, but they're mostly just to clear off his evasion. I don't really care if these medium lasers Roger. hit. Would have been nice if we hit the core. That may have been a kill. But both of the lasers are going to hit, and getting rid of the evasion, that was my primary thing. So now what I'm going to do is switch over to Behemoth. Matter of fact, I'll switch over to the Shadowhawk first, because this is the, the sort of weaker of the two. I'm going to move him in, keep his good side facing the enemies, like so. And Medusa, he's going to go for the Blackjack. And he, I really want him to kill the Blackjack. If he does this, then I can focus the Vindicator on the other mech whose name I forgot. Come on, boy. Hit that core. There we go. <laughs> Just watching those last few missiles fly in, just praying that they hit the right spot, is a bit stressful. So there we go. We got that, and now for the final piece de resistance, we get to focus our Vinny on the Enforcer. I could go for a precision shot to knock him back in initiative, and, and that would mean we can hammer into him with three guys. And I think that's what I'm going to do, because we, we might, might be able to kill him if we push him back in initiative phase. So I'm going to try that. Every single hit is going to connect. We destroyed his weaker firepower and left the AC-10, but that's pretty good either way. SRM ca- No, that's- Oh yeah, the carrier's dead. We got this. We did it. We did it. We won. We won. This felt- This felt really good. This felt really good. Even though- Commander. There was a certain amount of of tension coming into this. It felt really good to. I felt like I knew what I was doing the whole time, man, and and that that's that's a great feeling in battle. Excuse me, in BattleTech. I mean, it's it, it, there's so much going on at, at any given moment that w when you feel like you you have a 100% mastery over the mechanics that are at play in the game. That's that's amazing. So what we're going to do with Decker is run him somewhere where he can get a lot of evasion and then just brace him because he's a bit too hot so he can't do a proper alpha strike. And I'm going to face the left side on the enemies because his right side is taking a bit of a pounding. They might drive around and reposition on him, but even if they do, that's okay. So there we go. Decker's good to go there. Now, because this guy got pushed back the initiative phase, it's time for us to lay into him with everything we got. I know I'm overheating myself doing this. It was a calculated risk. Because the structural damage from an overheat is not that crazy. The repairs from that are, are actually pretty low in terms of the amount of time and cost. But it's when you hit this, this little fireball, if you go to that spot, your mech shuts down and... Enemies can make called shots on it. So that's where you get fucked up. <laughs> so I'm going to feel a lot more comfortable with making overheat moves from from now on because I know that to be a thing. 
Uh, and we could we could potentially kill the enforcer if we go big or go home. And I think that's what we're gonna do because the the small lasers, two small lasers are gonna deal more damage than one AC two shot. So I'm gonna move in and fire everything except the AC. Fuck it, we'll fire everything, including the AC two. No, we won't. Damn this large laser generates so much damn heat i don't want to overheat two mechs that seems excessive all right so here we go go nice mech destroy and with that we've finally broken line of sight on medusa so we can just kind of put him somewhere and and just just let him finally be safe the man can finally rest Definitely, the, the SRM carriers are a bit easier to manage than the LRMs. Because with those, it feels like it's almost more out of my control. Because with the SRM guys, I feel like I can control when they start attacking me. I can kite them around if I really need to. But the LRM dudes, they're going to hammer us until we get there. And it's no matter what, it's going to take us a long time to get into position. But, but hey, we did it. On the move. Let's kill these fools. Engaging target. All right, there we go. We got one, but I'm I'm really I'm genuinely surprised at how much of a beating these vehicles took before dying. All right, I think it's it's right that we end this with a stomp. Goodbye. Striker, you did a good job, but not good enough. Well done, Commander. I've alerted our employers. Let's get out of here. Mission successful. Oof, that was really, really tough, but really, really satisfying. I, th I, I want to say we made good decisions across the board. You know, th there was ne there was never a point in this where I felt like I could have done something better i could have definitely done things differently there's no doubt about that and if, if it, i i would love to hear if, if there's any point in here where you would have done something different put a timestamp and let me know what it is because i'm always curious about that kind of stuff in strategy games but i feel like overall i made good decisions and that is giving me a rush of adrenaline i, I feel really really nice about that mission uh yeah so so yeah we we, we get our nice payout of 288 grand and yeah we're gonna have to do some repairs on on two of our on three of our mechs but they're minor repairs it's just structural that like this looks like is really bad but it's not this is only going to take a couple of days to fix so yeah let's let's head back uh, oh we get to pick our salvage first we got uh, another blackjack which i'm not going to take but we did get a wolverine piece this guy was a bit scary he's got also and he also has a pretty nice assortment of hard points two ballistic hard points and three missile hard points which means he could pack a pretty heavy punch this might be a nice replacement for the blackjack until we get a jaeger mech which is probably one of my favorite mechs in the game so we'll take that piece i wish i could take both of them but we might get lucky we're not going to get lucky so we got an ac5 and some srm4s uh, and one wolverine piece that's okay that's okay so yeah, we'll, we'll head back to base to see how long the repairs are going to take. And then when we come back next time, we're going to do a priority mission. Uh, and I'll, I'll make sure that we have the Centurion ready to go because that is a, a very serious powerhouse damage dealer. The Centurion can... It, it, it's got a bunch of short-range missiles. It's going to be crazy. I'll share more about that when the time comes because, oh, it's so good. I mean, you guys have seen it before, but oh, it's been a long time since we've seen it. So... You know, you, you gotta see it again because it's so cool. So let, <laughs> let's get these repairs done. Uh, the Vindicator we caused it to overheat. Five day repair, 10k in terms of cost. That's totally fine. The Shadowhawk, six days. See, the, see, that's that's why you gotta. The overheat play is gonna become a thing that I do a lot because as we we see from this. 
just going going ham and firing all of our lasers ends up and overheating our mech ends up costing less than taking a pounding on a single spot. So if we're in a situation where we might kill if we choose to overheat, then that's a risk that I'm willing to take because it doesn't end up costing us all that much. And then the Panther took a little bit of a pounding in the arm, but that's only a one day repair job. So that's that's phenomenal. So there we go. We'll, we'll have to manage those tasks a little bit, bring them to the top. And obviously that's going to delay the Centurion a little bit, but it's totally fine. So we're gonna we're gonna fly to the next planet, and we're probably gonna end up just waiting uh, a full full on month until the Centurion's ready. But but yeah, guys, that that was pretty good. Our new setup is doing so much better than the last one. We can pump out crazy amounts of damage, and you know, it, save for the fact that our our Shadow Hawk has been taking a beating in these last two episodes, we, we've been doing a good job. So with all of that said, the name of the game is BattleTech. The name of the channel is I Blue Air JGR. Of course, let me know if there were what at what point in in the battle would you have done differently? Put a timestamp down there and let me know your strategy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.